Hello friends, this is Growl. I am joined here by my good friend Dorky. Hello friends, this is Dorky. And this is the Mythic Plus Dragonflight Season 1 official tier list. We're going to tell everybody what classes to decline, what classes you should delete, what classes you absolutely need to main. No, but in all seriousness, we've been playing a lot of beta and a lot of people have been asking how classes feel, what classes are good, you know, what the difference between some classes are. So this is going to be our breakdown. I'm going to go through all the healers. Dorky is joining me asking some great chatter questions. And I'm going to break down each healer into specific tiers with a brief explanation as to why. I do want to mention two things before we start. Number one is that this is day one of Dragonflight. We're waiting for the servers to come up now. So if you want a more up-to-date version of the tier list that's not so set in stone, check out the official Wowhead guide where I'll be updating this frequently as things change and patches roll in. Secondly, let's be honest. What are the most important attributes of a healer? You want somebody that's paying attention. You want somebody that doesn't die regardless of what class they play. I would never use this list to pick what healer I'm going to invite to my keys and you'd always prefer a better player over a less skilled one. I have to give this disclaimer or the class discords will be mad at me. But all right, let's jump in. Dorky, what healer do you want to hear about first? Yeah, so I have a very important question and I need to know this. Like, okay. I, I need to know now because the game's about to launch. What is the meta healer? You have to tell me. All right. Well, I'm not going to be able to break it down into one, but I'm going to give you two. So the first meta healer that I'm going to put in the S tier is Restoration Druid. Restoration Druid kept almost everything good that it had in Shadowlands. It has the Night Fae ability and the Necrolord ability. On top of that, it has a bunch of new strong passives. Its HPS is crazy. It's got Battle Res. Its gain, now Mark of the Wild, which is probably the best party buff you can have for any healer, giving your entire team 3% verse and it's just pumping out good damage, pumping out good heals. I think we might see the return of the Resto Druid meta. So would you say healer is gonna be the best healer? So the two things I think that are most important for healers are number one, the ability to heal really, really heavy burst damage. In this expansion, there's so many boss fights that are so hard that are just putting out insane amounts of unavoidable damage to your whole party that I think it is going to slowly go back towards what healer does the most healing is the best healer, but specifically in that sort of do tons of party healing in a 5 to 10 second window sense. But on top of that also, I do think damage is still important. I know a lot of people don't like that, but there's plenty of times when, you know, there's not a lot to heal. And if a healer is doing twice as much damage as the next healer, then you're always going to prefer that because you're going way faster. So you're telling me you're going to main Resto Druid? I main main Resto Druid. I'm going to level Resto Druid first, which the chat has decided that that means I'm going to main it. But the class that I'm going to be leveling second and also possibly maining that I'm also putting in the S tier is Preservation Evoker. And speaking of damage, this class absolutely blasts. The rotation is incredibly simple. You have virtually like two or three buttons and you're doing insane amounts of damage. When it comes to that burst healing, all of these new empowered spells that you have to charge up work so well because you can anticipate those big unavoidable bursts of damage, charge up a big one, use it. You have lots of really, really strong cooldowns. On top of that, while Evoker doesn't have Mark of the Wild and Battle Res, what it does have is Bloodlust. And it also has an interrupt that it doesn't cost that many points to spec into. So I think I'm rating both of these healers in the S tier, and I think it strictly depends on what fits in better with the team do you need a bloodlust do you need a battle res do you want a ranged healer like evoker is kind of like a mid-range thing so i think both of these healers could be the meta healer do you think the 30 yard range might not make the class viable that, how does it such, work it's such in a fights great question moms are very spread it's such a great question because a lot of people are worried about that i would say 95 percent of the time in dungeons you don't notice it at all it can be a little bit annoying. You definitely prefer in a pug scenario not to have your BM Hunter and your Warlock out in Narnia staying very, very far away. It makes things harder. However, there are a few fights, for example, 
the Raging Tempest in Noku Defensive, where everyone is constantly spread out, that can be really, really challenging for a vote. So I will say it definitely is viable, but you'll run into some bosses that can be quite difficult. Okay, well, I actually don't care about being a dragon. So can you tell me if Miss Weaver is viable or not? Well, Miss Weaver, in a spiritual sense, it is a dragon. You know, of the remaining healers, it's the closest that there is to being a dragon. I'm going to place Miss Weaver in the B tier. I feel like there's a definite gap between the two top healers and Miss Weaver. Honestly, Miss Weaver has been improved a lot in Dragonflight. The rotation is a lot cleaner. You have more instant casts you can use. Fist Weaving is doing more damage. You're actually doing real AoE damage. However, Miss Weaver just doesn't have those really, really strong cooldowns like Druid and Evoker do to get through those really crazy damage moments. You have Chi G every one minute. And then other than that, I mean, Revival is basically nothing. So you're relying on one cooldown to get you through possibly a boss fight that might have three or four insane damage moments that you just won't really have the feeling for. But I think that's mostly a concern for the really, really high-end, really tough keys when those bosses are doing that crazy damage. Miss Weaver's HPS is still pretty good. Like, even all the way up to 20 keys, I would say it's, like, totally viable. A pretty solid healer and it can pump out good healing. It's only when we get to those, like, crazy high keys when you're going to start to struggle, I think. What if I want to play Caster Miss Weaver? Is this a viable choice? <laughs> you know, I think... It's going to be better than it has been in previous expansions. Miss Weaver has a lot of talent options that you can take to buff your casted abilities. And so it's not going to feel like you're having like your talents are a waste. That being said, I still feel like the way that you're going to want to play Miss Weaver in dungeons just to do the most damage and most healing is going to be that fist weaving play style. Did you just laugh at my question, by the way? No, of course not. Okay, it, was so, a, it was a very uh, legitimate okay, okay. question. Okay, so what what would you say? What what would you do to make Miss Weaver viable? It doesn't look very viable, if you ask me. Um, I think the biggest thing since the most recent patch, they actually buffed some of the damage that Miss Weaver does, which helps its healing even more. The biggest thing I would do is if somehow they could turn revival into a good cooldown, so that you can use it to get through some of those harder moments and boss fights. Because right now, Revival is one of the most underwhelming 3-minute cooldowns. If Revival was something you could fall back on in an emergency in 5-mans, I feel like it would definitely move up at least one tier. But for now, you rely so much on Chi G, and if you're not able to get into melee to fist weave, your team is going to blow up. Okay, alright, sounds good. Alright, what about, what about Priest? I really want to play Priest, but which one should I play? Yeah, so they made lots of changes to both Dis Priest and Holy Priest. It's hard to say what's better. Me personally, I would give a slight edge to Holy Priest. I'll put it in like the high B tier next to Miss Weaver. Holy Priest, oh I think, especially for pugging, is a very, very good pug healer. Like Holy Priest is like made for just healing stupid and just spamming single target heals onto people who are standing and stuff and who don't know what's going on. It's also a very reactionary healer in that you can just kind of like wait and see what happens and push the health bars up rather than needing to do any sort of prep. I think most people are probably going to have an easier time with Holy Priest in pugs especially than Dis Priest. I feel like it struggles a lot in the same ways that Miss Weaver does and that it's damage isn't quite on the same level as druids and evokers it's party buff of fortitude is nice but it's not quite as good as something like mark of the wild or bloodlust and on top of that you just don't have a lot of really really strong cooldowns divine hymn is another cooldown that's very very good in raid paired with other healers and not very good on five mans when you're the only one what about this shadow disc priest i've been hearing about from oh the, the next dark priest, priest i know you know people might get upset about me here but I'm going to put Dis Priest in the bottom of B tier. I think Dis Priest, the unfortunate part is Dis Priest is a lot like Miss Weaver in the sense that its rotation got so improved. It feels so much better to play Dis Priest and Mythic Plus now because you're not spamming Shadow Men, you're not spamming Smite, you have a lot of cool buttons that actually feel like you're protecting your team and like using shields and turning damage into healing rather than just spamming Shadow Men. 
However, again, it just runs into the same problem where you don't have these really, really big healing output abilities. You can use Rapture and Barrier and it can protect you a little bit, but when it comes to just pure healing throughput to push health bars up, you just don't quite have it in the same way that Druid and Evoker do. I will say though that of the healers down in the B tier, Disc Priest actually has really, really solid damage and you also bring PI. So if you have a little bit of backup, let's say, you know, like a Feral Druid bringing Nature's Vigil or a Bear Druid with After the Wildfire, some sort of like off healing that'll help you out. I think Disc Priest is the most likely actually to find a team comp that works. The problem is no healer wants to like rely on that off healing unfortunately and i think this priest yeah gets placed here for me so you're saying i'm not actually healing the group if i'm playing this priest it's my team healing and i'm just resting during my globals <laughs> you're just resting no that's Dispriest... actually a perfect class for me <laughs> this priest i don't want does to do put damage. out a fair amount of healing and to be fair again you know i'm talking about like when i create a tier list i'm thinking about how healers are going to exist in the highest keys and what's going to be seen in like the top level meta game because we always see that sort of trickle down so anywhere up to a 20 key like when you're pugging and trying to get your max vault rewards honestly you'll be totally fine with this priest once you get some decent gear and you get some nice haste it's not going to be a situation where you're in a 15 key and you're not able to heal it's just something where looking at some of these really tough tyrannical bosses on some of the top levels i just feel like evoker or druid have better tools to deal with them than a class like this priest does all right sounds good okay what, what about holy paladin i've been hearing really good things about holy paladin especially from my friend drogo yeah, He's a Holy, Holy Paladins, Paladin connoisseur. Holy Paladins, I feel like, are always very passionate about their class. You know, they love it. They sneak in. They can kind of, you know, trick people. So it's hard to know how good Holy Paladins are at times. For me, I think I'm going to place Holy Paladin in the A tier. I consider it definitely a level above the healers below it in the sense that there's not too many encounters where I'm sitting on Holy Paladin and I feel like you're not able to heal it. On top of that, Holy Paladin is like the king of utility in the sense that you have so many different abilities that have the potential to negate boss things that you can just completely skip really hard tyrannical bosses by using Bubble or Bop or Devo to get through a one-shot. Freedom even removes some stuff. So I feel like Paladin can put out a ton of healing output the downside to Paladin, I think, is that, number one, it doesn't quite put out the same damage that Druid and Evoker does. So when I see people in the world first keys, I feel like there's definitely going to be some people playing Paladins, but it's only going to be those devout Paladin mains that are really good at the class. But if you're somebody who's going to reroll to the best healer, I feel like Druid or Evoker is just going to be making your team go a bit faster. On top of that, I also think the difficulty of Paladin is going to be quite a bit higher than Druid, and especially higher than Evoker, and it's going to take a lot of really good use of your abilities and your toolkit to make it through some of the hard bosses. Okay, what if I don't want to be in melee? Like, I just want to sit back and cast and heal. Is that a viable choice, or do I have to play? Am I forced to be in melee? Personally, I think you are forced to be in melee. Mistweaver had some good options, and like I would say almost half of the Mistweaver talent tree is revolved around casting, and you can create a full-on casting build with Mistweaver. I would really struggle to put together a full-on casting build with Paladin. The best part about the talents with Paladin is that you can use maybe anywhere from two to like eight of your talent points to give yourself some backup so that if you need to cast at range for a short time, you can can do that but i don't think pull out casting paladin is going to be a build that we'll see in very high keys all right so there's only two good healers so far all right what about the last one <laughs> i mean oh, so, so say two good healers i would say you could do pretty well in 99 percent of scenarios with all of the healers right it is a little bit of a mistake to say that only the top two are good ones you know a tier even b you know the c and d tier exist so they're not to say that any of these healers are not viable. But, but am I getting invited to groups? That's a great question. You know, probably not. Anyway, so as the last healer, we're going to talk about Resto Shaman. And I'm going to put Resto Shaman in the top of B tier. 
Rest of Shaman was doing basically zero damage and had a lot of problems in its talent tree early on in the beta. It's actually been getting buffed a lot. It received several damage buffs that were very big. It also received some small healing buffs. And it has quite a few different builds that you can set up depending on how much party healing you need. I think when it comes to like your pug experience and keeping your party alive, I think you're actually going to have an easier time with Resto Shaman as you will of the other three healers. I would say though that all four of the healers in the B tier are pretty close. And I would group them in the sense that they're going to be able to do plus 20s pretty easily. But once you start getting into like really, really high level keys, they're going to struggle with some fights. And Resto Shaman, I think, struggles the most in either like lots and lots of heavy damage events because the, all of your major cooldowns are three minutes or when there's a lot of movement involved because Resto Shaman relies a lot on like a ton of hard casted heals and people staying together. All right, sounds good. Yep, so this is the tier list. This is sort of my brief explanation with all of the healers, why they are where they are, and as well as some common questions that we get about how certain healers feel. I hope this was helpful to you guys. Again, this is day one of the expansion launch. If you're looking for a more updated list, let's say there's been some balance patches and stuff coming out, be sure to check out the official Wowhead tier list. We'll leave that in the description. But I think that wraps it up for us. You want to send them home, Dorky? Yeah, so I don't know. All right, great. Thanks, Dorky. Okay, have a good one, guys. Thanks for watching. Peace out.